Georgia Tech won the toss, and they'll receive. That might be the first time we've seen that all season long, and that's Jamal Evans waiting for Georgia Tech. Sam Swack's got it teed up for the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest, and the ACC championship game is underway. Line drive kick, Jamal Evans will take it to seven. Evans trying to cut it outside, and nice job on the tackle. Alfonso Smith made the stop. As we take a look at Georgia Tech in our IBM Star Watch. Deshard Choice probably doesn't get enough credit for Georgia Tech having nine wins this year, over 1,200 yards on the ground and 10 touchdowns. And Phillip Wheeler, a guy that made second team all ACC, I don't know how many linebackers in the conference were better than him, but he's Tech's sack leader and number two tackler. So Reggie Ball and company will start it at the 24-yard line. Jim Grobe looking on his defense on the field as Georgia Tech will hand off to Shard Choice, and he's going nowhere. No gain for the first play for Georgia Tech. Reggie Ball, Bob talked about on the senior out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, looking for his 30th win as a Georgia Tech quarterback. Probably the biggest problem Reggie's always had in his career. He's been compared to Joe Hamilton. There's his numbers, 46% completion. It's the same as his freshman year. Now, highly inconsistent player. The thing he does have going for, he is tough. He is hard-nosed. He is a competitor. Sometimes too hard nosed. Exactly. He tries to do too much. And he's healthy. That's the key thing today. Second and 11. Big opening up the middle for Choice. And he stiff arms across the 40, the 45, and out of bounds at about the 47 yard line. And there's number 22 going for 24. Take a look at that from behind the uh, defense. Everything starts to our left. And it looks like Arnell, number 43, right here, gets out of position, doesn't cover the gap. You know, these, both, <laughs> we can't say, both of these teams are pretty intelligent players. Uh, that's true. <laughs> pretty good player. We could call this the brain bowl. <laughs> so, I, you know, sometimes you overreact, you overread, and I think that was the case right there. At the 47, Georgia Tech, quick throw. Out to Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson into Wake territory, and he's got a first down. So Calvin Johnson already has half as many catches as he had last week against Georgia. As Bob said, you have to be pretty smart to get in. <laughs> Look at this. Average SAT scores. Look at these numbers. <laughs> I could have gotten a 1340 if I'd have taken it twice. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and, of course, the third smallest school in Division 1A is Wake Forest. Chan Gailey, Georgia Tech in his fifth season. Here's a throw. Johnson again. Calvin Johnson. He might have another first down. And loose ball at the bottom. I think they had blown it dead. The linesman says Georgia Tech ball, and he's got his left foot right on the yellow line. And, Paul, that one went right by you, and Calvin Johnson's already got two grabs early. He does, and they're playing him in the slot, and, and which is surprising to me is that Wake Forest is backing off Gathers, number 22, the safety, to cover him. They brought, they brought both Johnsons out, and then take a look. You're going to see... Calvin, there's really nobody on him. And finally, Gavis, number 22, tackles him eight or nine yards down the field. You can't play him that way. And now in the shotgun, Reggie Ball with another first down at the Wake Forest 31 already. And that's a quarterback draw. Ball cuts across the 25, and he's going to have another first down. So this is what we talked about. When he runs, he's effective, and he's in rhythm already with the short passes to Calvin Johnson. 11-yard pickup that time as we take a look at the Dr. Pepper starting lineups. Up front for Georgia Tech, Mansfield Rotto's the only senior on that offensive wall. And Mike Cox, the leading fullback. And Deshard Choice will tell you, I wouldn't have 1,200 yards without him. And then don't forget James Johnson, the other wide receiver, number 89, because if they double number 21, he has a tendency to get open, and he is... A very, very fast wide receiver. He goes out with Calvin to the top of your screen. Four straight plays of 10 yards or more. And now James Johnson in motion back across the field. The give on the inside handoff to Shard Choice goes four more yards down to the 16-yard line as we quickly try to take a look at the Wake Forest starting lineup defensively. Giles Tucker leads the team in sacks with six. John Abadi. The middle linebacker out of Powder Springs, Georgia, their number one tackler, and Josh Gaddis for the second year in a row, all ACC. Five interceptions last year, five more this year, and he's got over 70 tackles, and that's a great combination in the back end. 
But right now, Georgia Tech's just chewing up yardage, moving it down the field on their opening drive. Here's the toss to Shard Choice up the middle, broke one tackle and got close to the first down at about the 11-yard line. John Abadi knocked him off his pins, but Georgia Tech's got everything working right now, partner. They have, and uh, you know they're going up against a pretty good defense. You just talked about that defense. This is the strength of uh, Wake Forest is their defensive side and their kicking game. Their offense is, this defense is 20th in the nation in total defense, 11th against the run. Now to the high backfield, Choice the tailback on third and one. Calvin Johnson, the lone wide receiver down there to the bottom of your screen, and Reggie Ball takes it straight ahead on the quarterback sneak for the first down. So Georgia Tech started at their own 24-yard line. They have briskly moved down the field, and they've got a first and goal inside the Wake Forest 10. Reese, I got to tell you something, and I know you're looking at this. You've got two corners down here, Swanson number seven, and Patterson number 10. They are playing strict man-to-man -man on the outside, and they don't care who comes over. It's amazing. Well, if I were the quarterback, or if I were Calvin Johnson for Georgia Tech, I'd be smiling because I know I'm going to get single coverage most of the afternoon. Johnson's in the slot left on first and goal. The sharp choice behind his fullback. Whoa. Man, did he take a shot in the middle. And he got it from John Abadi again, the middle linebacker, number five. Abadi came in with 90 tackles, and that was a collision that time. John Abadi put his body on another body. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you, I'm down here, it's unbelievable that they hear it. I mean, when you just take a shot. Look at number five is John Abadi. Watch his hit. Bang, bam. I mean, that's helmet to helmet, and you don't go anywhere. Abadi. Undersized, if you will. Georgia Tech didn't want him. He wanted to play in Atlanta. Yeah. He's out of Powder Springs, Georgia. Undersized like Zach Thomas with the Dolphins. Exactly. Right? Reggie Ball. Option pitch to Shard Choice inside the five. Knocked out at about the four-yard line by Stanley Arnu, the outside linebacker. Pick up a four. So now it's third down and goal. And this is a spot on the field where you start thinking, do you throw the fade to Calvin Johnson or do you try to ram it in? I agree with Gracie 100%. I would throw the ball every down to Calvin Johnson. I mean, they really are playing man-to-man. -man. I didn't, you know, when they told us that at the beginning of the week, I thought, wait a minute, you've got to be a little crazy with this. But they're doing it. Johnson's in the slot. Georgia Tech at times has gone on a quick slant to him in this situation. But they're going to move him now on third down and goal. Ball drops to throw. Fires over the outstretch arms of Calvin Johnson. He didn't give him a chance. Incomplete. And Georgia Tech's impressive drive will come up to a field goal opportunity. There was absolutely no way on this earth that that man, Calvin Johnson, could have caught that ball. Well, and there was nobody open either. Calvin Johnson was covered, basically. This, this defense for Wake Forest is the, the number one defense inside the 20 in the conference. Now Travis Bell will come in to try a 21-yard field goal. A tight angle from the right hash, and Travis Bell knocks it in. So Georgia Tech draws first blood in the ACC championship for Chan Gailey and their fans with 10.27 to go first quarter. Georgia Tech a three-point lead after a 72-yard drive and 12 plays, a little over four and a half minutes. Deshard Choice had a 24-yard run, part of the 37 he had on that drive, but they had a first and goal at the nine, and they had to settle for a three-pointer. But the, the key thing about that whole drive was Reggie Ball was into the mix. He uh, made some completions. He got some running yardage. He, he had a good, positive first drive for Reggie. Mohamed Yayawi's got it teed up. Kevin Marion and Alfonso Smith wait on the other end for Wake Forest. High and short kick. Fielded way up at the 16 by Smith. Smith broke a tackle, cuts to the sidelines, got some room down that sideline, and finally bumped out of bounds. Great return out at the 46-yard line. So much for the short kick. And we told you Alfonso Smith would be in the mix today, both defensively and as a return man. 31 yards on the return. Our IBM star watch, Kenneth Moore, took over as a starting running back after being a wide receiver, and he is their leading rusher. And look who is also on our star watch, Alfonso Smith, who might have the opportunity to match up with Calvin Johnson much of today. He's got three interceptions, and we saw his return capabilities on that opening play. First down at the 46-yard line for Riley Skinner. 
And the Demon Deacon offense. Skinner, quick throw, high and wide, intended for Nate Morton in completes. So Riley Skinner, we talked about him in the open, had a chance to spend some time with him yesterday, a very intelligent young man. And uh, out of Jacksonville, as Bonnie talked about, 67% completion percentage on the season. They don't ask him to win games, but he doesn't lose a minute. Yeah, they, he's very low in percentage on interceptions and turnovers. Out of the gun now. And they give it off in a loss for Kenneth Moore as Georgia Tech's Adam Oliver makes a great play from his defensive end spot. Let's check in with Bonnie. Brad, Riley's got some good numbers, in particular just four picks this season, but when I talked to him, he said the one area he's still a little iffy on is blitz pickup, and if you watch Georgia Tech and their defense, you know, they bring it any opportunity they have. That said, Skinner said there are a bunch of wrinkles in the offense today. He's hoping we'll keep the rambling wreck in check, if you will. Well, they got a third down and long, and he'll probably see some of that blitz package of John Tenuta right here. Skinner in the gun. Georgia Tech might have gotten an early jump. No flags down. Skinner throws and off the hands of his tight end, Zach Selman, who should have had it. And had he held on, he had a lot of green in front of him. Well, a big plus for Georgia Tech early in the ball game. Their offense comes down and takes it down. Good drives and kicks a field goal. Wake Forest gets it on their first drive, three plays and out. But you're right, that was a good throw and should have been caught. That's Andrew Smith for Georgia Tech. And Sam Swank is a punt. Swank a great punter and kicker. Smith from the 15. And almost broke out of there. Had all kinds of white jerseys around, and he's holding on for dear life at about the 24-yard line, which is where Georgia Tech started their opening drive. Reggie Ball is coming up. Can Reggie lead the charge? He's the senior. He'll have his offense back on the field, looking for an ACC title when we come back in a minute. Two nights ago was when I was down there with uh, my high school buddies. We go when it's calm. Not that it was that calm on Thursday night either, but great place to hang out if you ever end up in Jacksonville. On first down, Richard Choice, much as his first carry went, no gain. Aaron Curry on the tackle as we check in with Matt Weiner in New York. Matt. Reggie Ball back to throw, going deep. Calvin Johnson's out there. And we're going to have pass interference on Riley Swanson. And if you want to know the truth, that's a smart play by Riley Swanson. Uh, Ness, yeah, I, I tell you, it happened right here in front of me. Calvin Johnson puts a double move on Swanson and throws him. And I mean, he absolutely freezes him. Watch this, right about now. Then he's frozen. Now he breaks back up the field. This is a smart play by Swanson. Other than that, if this ball would have been led properly, it would have been a touchdown. Easy. Well, you have to go back to last week to see that Swanson jumped on uh, at, at Maryland. When they won the game up in Maryland, he picked off a pass and ran it back. And then the next play, next series of plays, they, they had an opportunity to hit Swanson for a deep ball and missed it. Georgia Tech saw that and came out right away and tried to attack Swanson. First down now, Georgia Tech by penalty at their own 39 with a three-point lead here in the first quarter. Deshard Choice wraps his arms around the ball and got maybe two. You know, funny on that last play, that beautiful route by Calvin Johnson. He doesn't worry about touchdowns. He just likes plays like that. Whatever route it is, I like to, you know, being the guy get him running the go other direction that I'm going, you know. So once I see him going the other direction, then it's clear for me to go the other way, and that's why I like to see him going the other way while I'm going this way. You talk about bending a guy, almost broke him, <laughs> much less bent him. <laughs> Second down and eight now for Georgia Tech at the 41-yard line. Mike Cox, the fullback in motion, play action. Reggie Ball firing deep, this time for James Johnson, just over his outstretched arms. It would have been a touchdown, and Reggie knows it. Riley Swanson was covering there as well. What a, what a great setup that was. They had the, both the Johnsons, Calvin and James, in, in, on the same side. And they ran Calvin kind of on like a little delay down, just straight down the field. 
and James took off, and Swanson never saw him go by. They're going to wear this kid out. Grease, the great one on this is Reggie Ball would like to have that throw on the previous play. Oh, for sure, because he got it out far enough this time. Swanson is the guy that gets beat again on this one as James Johnson with a lot of speed runs right by him. Now third and eight with three wideouts in there, and Reggie Ball's going to keep it on a quarterback draw, and he's not going to get the first down. Got out to about the 47-yard line, a couple yards shy. The bottom line with Reggie Ball, he is not the type of guy that's going to complete a high percentage of his passes. He likes to throw the ball long. He's going to run the football. He just, he's not a high percentage passer. Now, on the other side, Riley Skinner, he's very accurate, and he's going to complete a high percentage, but not Reggie Ball. Durant Brooks will kick Willie Idolettes waiting on the other end, and Brooks has been a sensational weapon for Georgia Tech this year as their putter. And he hit it a mile in the air. Idolette calls fair catch and takes at about the 11-yard line. So good kick, no return. And a penalty marker down. Penalty marker down. And let's see what this one's about. You don't see many penalties unless a man downfield early. It's thrown in the middle of the field back closer to where the ball was caught, though. So Ron Cherry is going to tell us about it right here, Ron. Dead ball personal foul. It's against Wake Forest at the end of the play. Boy, that takes 11-yard line and makes it to five and a half. And Jim Grove is going, how do we get one of those on a punt? How about the referee? Is that a little dramatic? I mean, you yeah, sit there, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait, and then he finally, watch foul. this. Hello? 59 on the receiving team. That penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. And it's Aaron Curry, who the penalty was called on, so it backs it up to the five and a half. Not good field position on a rainy day in Jacksonville. We'll see what Wake Forest does with it. Their second time with the ball, Riley Skinner set to go. His team down by three. It's the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship. Here's the offensive starting lineup for the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Rich Belton, their fullback, is a good one out of the backfield. Nate Morton, watch him. He's got all the speed at wide receiver. Steve Vallis will play both right and left tackle for Wake Forest. He's their most dominant lineman. He's played about every spot except center over his career. Riley Skinner, tough spot in his own end zone to throw on first down. And throws complete and got it out to the 14, about two yards shy of a first down. And Riley Skinner talked about how well they take care of the football as we take a look at Georgia Tech defensively. Joe Anawai is an all-conference nose tackle in there. K. Michael Hall, the leading tackler for Georgia Tech, and Jamal Lewis, first team all-ACC performer at safety. And you don't mention that defense without saying the name John Tenuta, right. because he is all over that defense. And it is an aggressive, blitzing defense. 80% of the time, there's at least five guys coming. On second down and two, and they're gonna get a first down run here, and a tough run it was by Kenneth Moore. Riley Skinner. And we talked about it, how well they take care of the football. He says that's part of the strength of the Wake Forest offense. We've made a huge emphasis this whole entire year, from last spring to the summer, of limiting turnovers and taking care of the ball and letting our defense do what they do best. You know, they're, they're, they're playmakers, and they'll, they'll give the ball back to you. They only have five interceptions and ten fumbles all year. That's taking care of the ball pretty well through 12 games. They fake the inside handoff. Skinner wants to throw it back that way. Here comes the Georgia Tech pressure, and he weaves his way across the 20-yard line. Got about a yard on the carry. Adam Oliver made the stop. The ACC football championship on the line. Trip to the Orange Bowl and the BCS for one of these teams. Unlikely participants. Wake Forest, the Atlantic Division champion. Georgia Tech, the Coastal Division champion. Wake Forest won 10 games this year. Georgia Tech is 9-3. Coming into this one, five minutes left in the first quarter with Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, and Bonnie Bernstein. I'm Brad Nessler. Here's the give on the inside, and all over more is Daryl Richard. And Daryl Richard, a loss of three on the play for the big fella, the sophomore, 6'4", 285. Brad, what I'm seeing down here is, is just take a look at him. Richard's going to make the play, but watch him when he goes across. They're all run blitzes. 
They're all accounting for a back. See him? He looked at the back. He sees the quarterback, but he took the back instead. I mean, he took more. This is their jobs. They, these guys, when they blitz, I call them run blitzes because they're looking at back first, quarterback second. Third down and 12. Wake was not a good third down team this year. 36% on the season. Here comes the Georgia Tech pressure. Skinner, what a throw. Just threaded it down to the 35-yard line to Kevin Marion. You can't do it any better than that. Ooh, the coaches told us that this kid was very accurate way back when he came in. He's going to stand in the pocket. Protection is pretty good. Throws a deep slant before the safety gets there. You got to know what you're doing to throw that ball. Kevin Marion only a sixth catch of the year. None bigger than that one on third down at 12. They pick up 18 yards. And now they've got breathing room and a drive working at their own 36-yard line. Skinner on first down. And hit from behind, and the ball is out. Big pileup, and Wake Forest is going to keep it. Matthew Brim comes up with a loose ball. Michael Johnson is the guy that forced the fumble from behind. Johnson coming from that backside. Big number 93. He's six seven and only about 250. There he is right there, right in front of him. Look how tall he looks like a basketball player. He'll fill out. They expect huge things from him. He's yeah. one of their top special teams players as well. Now the end around coming with Adelettes. And Willie's knocked out of bounds over there at about the 37-yard line. Riley Skinner and the Demon Deacons offense. Look at how far off the linebackers are. Now they come up. They, here's where they, they, they fake blitz. And then they'll get back out. Or they'll come from there. They go back out. One comes, one drops. Skinner in trouble in the pocket, and he's going to go down again. Joe Anawaii, the captain of the defense. Loss of seven. You know... Brad, that was, it's just it's just a great disguise. And when you take a look at it, you look at the linebacker stepping up in. Now watch, one goes back, the other one comes up in. They really don't know who to block. Well, who came was number four. That's the strong safety, Jamal Lewis. Usually, Paul, the guys that are up there faking are not the ones that are coming. It's somebody standing over behaving themselves like Lewis was. He's the guy when the ball snap gets in your face. Penalty markers before the punt. Second time we've had a penalty on a punting situation. This one's an offside on Georgia Tech. It's not going to change anything that much. Still going to be fourth down and long. Offside. Defense number seven. It's a five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. So they'll walk it off. And you know, John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, is smiling up there. Likes to give nicknames to everybody, including Joe Anawai. He's got one for everybody that he likes. I think if you have a nickname, you're in good graces with <laughs> yeah, him. That's right. Sam Swank to punt. Andrew Smith waits on the other end for Georgia Tech. Tech got close to the kick. Boy, he hit it a mile in the air. Not that deep, but it's way up there. And Smith almost got bumped on the other end with a fair catch. So Joe Anoai, big sack to force the punt. What's he known as, John Tenuta? Joanna Wise, Y50, you know, because, you know, book him Dano. He makes the sack, you know, book him Dano. I mean, this kind of fits. So, you know, th those things fall into play, you know. And sometimes I use other words, but, I mean, most of the time the, the, the funny ones come out. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. John Tenuta, one of the best around, and Joanna Y, one of the best around. Yeah. Don't yeah. you just love just sitting around talking to Tenuta? I mean, <laughs> it, it, you, just, you just wait for him to say something funny, and he's going to. When Wheeler, say, Wheeler says, you know, when you first meet the guy about 15 minutes in, you know where you stand. That's right. <laughs> first down at the 28. Georgia Tech on an end around with Calvin Johnson. Calvin puts a stiff arm out there and has run out of bounds on his own bench, and the coaches are hot. They think the, late, the uh, hit was late. Calvin doesn't say anything, just pops right up. Chip Vaughn. Is the guy that helped direct him out of bounds. See, Calvin didn't say anything. He didn't say No, he doesn't say, say much, much. At all, does he? It? won both the Offensive Player of the Year. First team All-ACC was a unanimous choice, the only unanimous choice. He was also the Player of the Year in the conference. So he had to pick up two trophies at the luncheon yesterday. And I said, Calvin, you know, you keep the big one. I'll take the little one home with me. 
and he had to do two acceptance speeches and both of them lasted about 23 seconds because Calvin is a quiet guy and he's as humble now as the day he walked on the Georgia Tech campus. False start, 73 offense. It's a five yard penalty. Well, what about what about when Calvin was up there accepting his second trophy and he right. turned around to the coaches who were sitting behind and he very politely was going to say I want to wish good luck to the coaches. Well, Chan Gailey was too far behind him to say to his own coach. So he looked at Jim Grobe and said, <laughs> good luck, coach. <laughs> and it almost looked like he said, good luck covering me. Good tomorrow. luck trying to cover me. <laughs> but it wasn't that at all. No, it wasn't. But it sure appeared that way to the crowd. <laughs> Reggie Ball to throw. Going to go deep. Down the sideline of Johnson and out of bounds. Gave him a shot at it. Nice coverage though by Alfonso Smith back there again. Tonight, don't miss. I like to watch the snow and ice and wind games. You know, we don't necessarily want to do them. I don't like to broadcast them, <laughs> and I don't like to play in them. I like to be sitting at home and watching them. Third down and nine. Reggie Ball looking left and going long for James Johnson on the near sideline, and he's bumped in another pass interference. What Georgia Tech is doing is saying, you know what, we're going to throw it up, give the Johnson guys a chance to make the catch, and if they don't, maybe we'll get a penalty, and they got another one. Well, James Johnson is the one that actually, I mean, he gets the penalty because he waits on the ball, and he comes back. He can see the ball in the air. The defensive back can't. Watch stretches here. Here comes the, here's the play to the outside, and that's Patterson. And watch here. He's got the ball. See, Johnson can see it. Now he stops. Patterson's got to run through him. There's oh. nothing else he can do. Yeah, no question that's on the defense. Patterson right there sticks his arm out and runs through him. The problem was he couldn't see the ball, and he wanted to make sure he didn't catch it. If he would have, if, if his timing would have been better, it would have been all right. Just Almost the exact same spot that the last pass interference occurred, and Georgia Tech's got another first down by penalty at the 44-yard line. A minute 36 to go in the first quarter. Reggie Ball straight run and straight ahead for the 47. Picked up about three with a minute and a half to go. Let's check. Uh, he was about 6'3 hey, two years ago. Paul, put on a helmet or something. And Joyce. Hey, for five Gracie, is short of the first down I, by I, I, about wait, a yard. I just let you guys talk about the weather. It's really nice out here, huh? It looks great. Are you warm? We're very toasty. Yeah, thanks. Let's check in with Bonnie. Brad, I'm talking about the shard choice. This week, you know, Georgia Tech has this rule, the 24-hour rule. You either have a day to celebrate or to lament the, the win or the loss. But Tashard said this week, we kept up with us all week. We wanted to keep that fire in our belly to help give us the momentum to achieve our year-long goal, and that's winning this game right here. On a third down and one, they're going to try and end around. Calvin Johnson's in a lot of trouble, and he's collared, and he's dropped way back for a loss of about 10. Aaron Curry stayed with it. And Georgia Tech will question that call in their minds for a series or two, running an end around on third down and a yard and a half. Now Patrick Nix calling the plays this year for the first time from Chan Gailey, and that one he is certainly going to want back. I don't, I don't like third and one reversing. We played a quarter. Battle for the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. And a berth in the Orange Bowl on the line. Georgia Tech's got a three-point lead. says it all as we are set to start the second quarter. Georgia Tech leading 3-0 over the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Durant Brooks set to punt. Willie Idolette waits on the other end for the Demon Deacons. Not a good kick this time by Brooks. Idolette's going to have a chance on it at the 18. And he's going to go down at the 18. Great coverage by Georgia Tech's punt coverage group as we take a look at the Dr. Pepper stats in the first quarter. 86 total yards. Georgia Tech got away from the rush a little bit. Wake Forest wants to run and they, they can't. Riley the Skinner against that blitzing defense of Georgia Tech. Having a little trouble. Having some trouble. Now they got something working on the ground. On the end around. Kevin Marion will take it for positive yardage. Picked up eight on the play. Love it. Good thing for Wake Forest, though. They're only trailing by a field goal, and they're probably going to get a first down by penalty, as it looked like Darrell Richard fell into the neutral zone, and that would give them five yards and a first down. 
Offside. Defense. Number 95. It's a five-yard penalty. You know, sometimes, Brad, it's the guy that's closest to the ball that jumps off. Now, you'd think that he could never jump off sides because the ball's right in front of his nose. But he's the one that can hear the quarterback the easiest. I mean, and, and sometimes the inflection of your voice will pull him off and nobody else. And that's exactly what happened there. And a first down by penalty for Wake Forest at the 32-yard line. Now Skinner looking to the sideline and looking out to his wide receivers, and he's going to have a rehuddle there. <laughs> Drop back in the spread. Tight end in motion as they give it off on the ground to Moore. And Moore out for a couple yards Brad, to the 34. I've been doing this, what, 25 years now, and this I've never seen an offense quite like what Wake Forest runs. They, they, the three... They have three wide receivers that have carried the ball 40 times this year in the running game. It's a little bit it's a hand bone. It's a little bit wishbone. It's a little bit yep. end around. It's a little misdirection, a lot of misdirection. Remember, Jim Grobe coached a long time as an assistant at Air Force. And Fisher DeBerry and those guys ran similar offenses and still do at Air Force. Here's a pass. The screen really never developed for Moore or Skinner. Every week we do an in the pit. Steve Ballas, the uh, tackle for Wake Forest. You see there is uh, the stats and his where he's from in Ohio, but he is unquestioned the leader of this ball club. And he's also the uh, the muscle guy. When Whenever the new quarterback came in, when Skinner came in, immediately Ballas says, this is the guy who will skip behind him. Third and five, Skinner over the middle. It took a big hit as he let go of the ball from K. Michael Hall, and it's incomplete. So Georgia Tech's defense does its job and forces a punt from Wake Forest here early in the second quarter as John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator, looks on. You know, Brad, one of the things is when you when you run a screen, the guy that's in the screen has to go out for the pass. <laughs> that time he did. Andrew Smith waits on the punt of Sam Swank. High snap, Swank handles it and got the kick out of there. Did a good job just to get his foot on it. And now Smith's going to take it on the hop from a gutsy call, but he'll gain about three yards on the return. John Tereshinsky down there on the special teams to make the stop. Calvin Johnson. He's had it on the end of round. He's caught a couple of balls so far today, and he's looking for more when we come back. Georgia Tech now will take over offensively at the 31-yard line. Calvin Johnson in the slot to the left side. Two receptions today, and picked up a pass interference call as well. Here comes a blitz off the corner. Reggie Ball's going to run that way, and didn't get much. John Abadi, and again, the middle linebacker, makes the stop and a body has made his presence felt in this Wake Forest defense today that's for sure low scoring game on a rainy day in Jacksonville three nothing with 13 and change remaining in the first half a battle for the Atlantic Coast Conference overall championship between the Atlantic Division champs the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest and the team that won the Coastal the Ramblin' Wreck of Georgia Tech and a trip to the Orange Bowl at stake here today the shard choice only about two in the the run game Started off pretty well, Bob, for Georgia Tech, but Abadi and company closing the door on Tashar Choice right now. Well, this is not an easy defense to run against. They're always moving. They are quick. They are fast. The defensive linemen are always moving, slanting one way or the other. It's hard for the linemen to get good blocks on them. Tashar Choice, 46 yards on 10 carries. And that's a third down and five. Three wide outs for Reggie Ball. Looking left, and now he wants to keep it. And he'll try to run for the first down, and he got it. Tiptoed out of bounds at the 43-yard line. So Reggie Ball keeps Georgia Tech's hopes alive on this drive. Time for our Aflac trivia question. When was the last time Wake Forest played a game here in Jacksonville? Think about that one. We have to go back a ways. I'll give you a hint. It wasn't last year. Well, you're really good. That's the best hit I could give you. <laughs> it's really helpful. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Reggie Ball, six carries for 34 yards. Drops back on play action. Wants to go on the sideline and does, completes it. Calvin Johnson stretching out to the 34-yard line. Yes. Up of 22. This was another one of those double moves, and they cut it off. He ran a double move back on the outside on Swatson again, and then instead of breaking up the field, he just kind of stopped and waited on the ball. It was, it was a perfect play, and you've got to have great block in the offensive line to do it. Calvin's on the top. Watch. Here's the move. Bang. Now he starts again and just stops. Swanson's gone. Has no chance. And Reggie Ball almost had his head taken off by John Abadi when he let go of that pass. Yeah, he did. And he had more time to throw it, and he needed more time because it was a much deeper route. Choice got about two, and Abadi's on the bottom of that pile again. Bonnie? Brad, we all know how much NFL potential Calvin Johnson has. He has the size, the speed, the route running ability. But Buddy Guys, his receivers coach, says what sets him apart is his work ethic. And he actually compared him to Hall of Famer Troy Aikman, who Guys worked with in Dallas in the late 90s. He said Troy would come to work every day like he was going to lose his job. He always had a thirst to learn, and that's what he sees in Calvin. So he says he's got the natural skills and the work ethic, and that's what makes him so special. And Jan Gailey's been around a long time and been in the NFL. A long time, and he's never seen one as good. There he is in the slot on second down and long. Reggie Ball rolls, looking to throw, and fires, and this one he threw away to avoid the loss of yardage. Stanley Arnu was chasing Reggie on the sideline. Everybody downfield was covered. Chan uh, Gailey's offense getting Reggie outside because of, so they can run some deeper routes and not have to protect the quarterback in the pocket, but you get the quarterback outside the pocket, you can run a lot deeper routes like Johnson did on the other side when he ran that out and up and then stopped. Chris Dunlap checks in as a third Georgia Tech wide receiver. On third down and eight, here comes a blitz. Reggie Ball fires in and out of the hands of James Johnson. He maybe should have had that one. Riley Swanson is the guy that put the hit on. James Johnson dropped a couple of catchable balls against Georgia last week, and he should have had that one, too. Yeah, he should have caught that one. So now Georgia Tech's got a fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. They're not in Travis Bell's field goal range. They don't want to punt from the 33-yard line, so let's see how they do on fourth down, where they're five out of eight so far this season. Not that much of a field position gamble here, but we'll see how they work it on fourth and eights. Reggie fires, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 15-yard line. Aaron Curry coming the other way. So they did give up field position because it was a 31-yard return of the interception. Brad Curry, number 59, and I'm sitting here about 20 yards away from him. He's just watching Reggie Ball's eyes. And look at, you're gonna see him dropping back. He's just, right, there it is. Thank you, Robert. And look at, he just watches his eyes, sees the ball come in, and then picks it off. This is just a perfect play by the linebacker. That's, and, a, and a very poor throw by the quarterback. You know, when you're playing quarterback, you don't look so much at the receivers and where they're going and coming from, as you do, you look at the linebackers and the DBs. He looked at his receiver the whole way. Double reverse coming on first down. Nate Morton. And Nate Morton got maybe four yards on the end around. Gary Guyton made the stop. Going and all this <laughs> hypothetical stuff. We'll finally get to know who's going where. Second down and six. Here's the give to Kenneth Moore. Moore trying to go wide, and he's not going to get there. Kenny Scott, nice job defensively, a loss of three. Jim Grobe, his team is a little bit different offensively. He talked with us about it. It's a good group. It's a group that has taken the uh, uh, attitude that if we take care of the football, make a few first downs, uh, you know, once in a while score when we can, uh, that we'll have a chance to win football games. So it's a, it's a very uh, team-oriented group. They won a school record 10 games looking for 11 and looking for his wide receiver and getting it. 
Riley Skinner, nice throw to Willie Adelette. And there, the rookie comes and headbutts one of his linemen. Oh, I'm gonna tell you what, it, you talk about a young man, and Bob, you hit him on the head about being composed. Watch what he does here. He sees the crowd coming. So now, he just, all he has to do now is step to my left. If I step to my left, I'm gonna have that big opening right there. And when he does, look where he puts the ball. It's perfect. Can't throw it any better than that. Moore. On the first play run in Georgia Tech territory for Wake Forest today, no gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10 as we're down, approaching the nine minute mark. <laughs> Smile on Riley Skidder's face. Everything you. yesterday was yes, sir, no, sir. <laughs> you know, the coaches told us that he was a, he was cool and collected and very calm in the pocket, and you can see it. I mean, this is the biggest game of the year for a redshirt freshman and for his ball club. You know, he's just out there having a good time. At the 31-yard line, he's got a second down and 10. K. Michael Hall showing blitz, and that backs out of it. And now he'll bring it anyway, right up the middle. Skinner throws, completes it. It's out to Nate Morton. Nate Morton short of the first down, but a pickup of about eight in front of Avery Roberson, the cornerback. So the Demon Deacons have got something working. Bob, you and Ness were talking. We were talking. I heard Bob give the scouting report to these guys the other, yesterday about speed on this field. Man, is there a lot of speed, offensively and defensively. These aren't really big, big people, but boy, can they cover some ground. Here's a big third down for Wake Forest, third and two. Skinner wants to throw for it. Pressure from the backside. He's not going to get rid of it. Willie still on his feet, and now he's dropped for a loss. Yeah by Kenny Scott. He, he got out of a, a few messes. He was not going to get away from everybody. That was like being on the freeway and you say, okay, this truck's swerving in front of me and I got around him, but I didn't see the pickup over the it, HOV it, lane. Exactly. What? One, one to throw it to the left, moved to his right. Ooh. That was out of left. Oh, was that a great hit. I'm sorry, Bob, but that was just too good to pass up. That was on K. Michael Hall, out of left with the block. And now Wake Forest will try to tie things up. Sam Swank, one of the best kickers in the country, he'll try a 45-yard field goal. And he is 18 of 24 on the year. Swank from 45 to try to tie it. And he pushed it to the left. Wet field, remember. And Wake Forest had a good drive and came away empty. So they had the interception by Aaron Curry, drove down the field. K. Michael Hall got a little taste of the Wake Forest wide receivers, but the Yellow Jackets hold on to their lead. 70,000 square feet of interactive games, official game merchandise, basketball games on a full-size court, all the folks having fun out there. Reggie Ball trying to have some fun on first down. Go along for James Johnson, and it's out of bounds incomplete. And it's Riley Swanson covering. Rain continues to fall. And it can't make the game any easier on either one of these offenses. Well, uh, Reggie Ball does have big hands, and we're, you know, you're concerned when, when it's raining about throwing the football. Asking Chan Gailey uh, earlier in the season when we did one of their games, he says, Chan has no problem throwing the football when it's wet. Reggie has only hit one of his last eight. He's three out of ten. Here he is on the option pitch to Shard Choice. To Shard trying to cut back, and he took a shot from Alfonso Smith. And a loss on the play. It's going to be third down and long. Our Pacific Life game summary. Georgia Tech got things going. A couple of passes completed their first drive to Calvin Johnson. And they got down close enough for a Travis Bell field goal. Reggie Ball, 44 yards on the ground. He has thrown an interception. And Riley Skinner, 5 of 8. He's had his team in Georgia Tech territory once, but they missed a 45-yard field goal. That's where we are at 3-0. Third down and 13 now for Ball and the Georgia Tech offense. Three wide outs in there. He's got time to throw, and he's going deep for James Johnson. No, it's Dunlap. Dunlap's out of bounds. It is James Johnson. I beg your pardon. Well, I don't know if Reggie's disgusted with himself or his wide receivers, well, but that ball was out of bounds. Uh, he's, he threw the ball out of bounds, so, he, you know, that's about the sixth or seventh deep ball that Georgia Tech has thrown down the sideline. I don't know, how many of those have been completed? Not more than two, I know. I think the only ones that were positive yardage were by penalty. Brooks, great kick. 
Way back to the 25 is Moore. Moore broke a tackle at the 30. He's got a nice return going of about 17 yards. Boy, it was a great punt. But Georgia Tech didn't cover. And a 17-yard run back after a 55-yard kick. Riley Skinner trying to get his offense on the field and get it in gear with 6.22 to go in the first half. Wake Forest has one rushing yard so far in the first half of this ballgame. Riley Skinner is not a out of the lineup. Yeah. And so it's Moore who keeps it on a direct snap, took a big hit at the end of the play from D.J. Jones. So another little twist to the Wake Forest offense. Put Moore in the direct snap, and now Skinner will come back out on the field. So that's the best run of the day, nine yards. Yes, you better pay attention on defense, I'm telling you, because they don't know who's in the, in the offense. The guy that made the hit, D.J. Jones, kind of rolled over funny after making the stop, and he has made a couple of moves over to the sideline and now has gone down to a knee. And we're going to measure this to see whether or not Moore got the first down. Looks to be that he will. Nope, going to be, wow. That close. Uh, that is a first down. Uh, to uh, see if his offense can get something going here in the last six minutes of the first half. Skinner back in at quarterback. And now he stops, looks to the sideline. A lot of time on the, uh, the play clock. Goes one way and then cuts back. That's a design play. He didn't just do that on his own. And now the ball is out. Fumble at the end of the play, and Wake Forest got back on top of it. And it's Nate Morton on the bottom of all that grass that most of is on his helmet now. <laughs> you know, we talk about Calvin Johnson, James Johnson. Well, Michael Johnson, this guy was blocked, and then he's going to come back and make the play. Michael Johnson, number 93, right there. He's the guy that knocks the ball out. But he was blocked by Skinner in the backfield. And then he kept continued on with the play and caused the fumble. Vance Walker had a great play on the ball and it just scored it out of there on him. So Wake maintains possession with a second down and 13. Hand off to Moore. And Moore got out across the 45 to about the 46. It's going to be third down and about 11. College football facts can be found on the ESPN College Football Encyclopedia. It's in stores nationwide. Check it out. Comes a blitz on Skinner. And a nice throw. I don't know if it's enough for a first down to Nate Morton. He's very close. Got about 10. I think he's about the length of the football short. The Georgia Tech coaches are thinking that on the sideline as well. Yeah. That was the fourth time that Wake Forest had had a third and 10 or longer. And uh, this team with a redshirt freshman quarterback they don't want those type of situations. Getting third and long too many times against John Tenuta yeah. coach defense, and you're going to find yourself in trouble. Oh, so we have a sure. second measurement now of this drive. His wife said time. to me last night, she said, I don't care how much he wins, but I want my name on the check. <laughs> 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 so she said, it doesn't matter. As long as it's made out to me, I'm happy. There it is, about the length of the football, shy of a first down. And now, all of a sudden, the crowd woke up for the first time today on this rainy day for both teams. One for that offense and one for the Georgia Tech defense on the other side. Biggest play so far of the ball game. Skinner gives it off to his fullback. And Belton looks like he's got the first down. As they unpile, Rich Belton, the sophomore out of Chapel Hill, a 250-pounder, took it straight ahead. You look in that pile, it's the two linemen that, that come in and mark it. See one with a big L on his back. That's the guy that comes in. He's the line judge. He comes in from the side. He's the one that puts his foot down that says how far the uh, football got, or maybe across the line, maybe short of the line. Rich Belton, that's his 180th rushing yard of the year, and maybe none more important as he picked up the first down. Skinner is out again. And Moore playing in that direct snap formation. 
Fakes the handoff and then takes it straight ahead, and Georgia Tech can't catch him until he's got about eight more yards. Kenny Scott made the tackle. <laughs> I'm sitting right here looking at this play, and you should see from the camera that we have right now, He actually freezes the defensive lineman or the linebacker on that side with a fake. Just watch it. Watch, watch what he fakes now. Look at the guy on the top. Watch him freeze. Now he's got him stuck. So he comes right back to the inside where there's no one to, to hit him, and he picks up almost nine yards. You know, Kenny Moore played in a wing tee back in high school in Charlotte, North Carolina, and he stays in there to take the direct snap, fakes it again, will take it again on his own, and it's a first down. And with Skinner out of there, he's a guy that started off the season as a wide receiver. When Micah Andrews went down to injury, he's up to 418 on the season now. He's making his fourth start at running back also. You mentioned that Micah Andrews was hurt earlier right. in the year. Micah will be back next year, and so will Ben Mock, who was the starting quarterback before he broke his arm. Here comes Moore again. He'll keep it. Georgia Tech trying to get to him. Helmet to helmet crash with Kenny Scott, but not before he got about nine more yards. And now a flag in, and that might be the call. I don't know that necessarily Kenny that, Scott was thinking about leading with his helmet, but that might be what the penalty is going to be about. Personal foul on Georgia Tech. He's going to come right at you. Kenny Moore, watch this. Now look at how. Johnson gets frozen to the inside. This was what that fake handoff does. Now here comes the hit. It's going to be helmet to helmet, and then he grabs him by the face mask on top of it. So a double penalty. I think that's a bad call. I do too. I didn't see any face mask, and he hit him way before he was out of bounds. And then when he was out of bounds, he didn't throw him down or anything. I think that's a poor call. It's first and goal for Wake Forest, a chance to get the lead here at the Georgia Tech 10-yard line. Moore finds the sledding a little tougher when he's not taking the direct snap, and he might have gotten a half yard out of it. Daryl Richard made the stop. We're down to two and a half minutes in the half. Don't forget USC and UCLA, crosstown rivals getting together out on the West Coast after our game, and if USC wins it, they'll have a date, we assume, with Ohio State in the national championship. Moore is back at quarterback. Skinner left the field, so this is, a, this is a position he likes now. He drops the towel behind him and will take a direct snap on second down and goal. And it's just student body right. Georgia Tech trying to get to him, and they do, but he got maybe to the seven-yard line. With that, with that running back playing quarterback, they haven't even come close to throwing a pass. No. And Georgia Tech knows it because they had like 11 guys up the line of scrimmage at that time. So Skinner's got to come back in now because it's third down and goal. You give him at least one more option, and that is to throw the football. Three wide receivers for Wiley and company. Kevin Harris joins him in the backfield. Wake Forest, third and goal. Skinner fires to the corner. He's got his man. It's Belton, and he's belted out of bounds at the two-yard line, short of the goal line. It'll be fourth down and goal. And here comes the field goal unit for Wake Forest. The receiver in the backfield, the fullback, number 35, just slides out. It's a safe throw. You either get the touchdown or get on the board with the three points. And now Sam Swank's going to be almost in the exact same spot Travis Bell was in the first quarter for Georgia Tech. He missed one from 45. This should be a chip shot. It's a 19-yard field goal attempt for Sam Swank to try to tie the game up. From the right hash, and the kick is up and good. And so we're even now in Jacksonville. In a tough defensive battle on a rainy day, the Wake Forest fans have something to cheer about with a minute and 16 seconds remaining in the first half. 3-3, Calvin Johnson's getting ready. He hopes he can do something before halftime with a field goal each as Wake Forest went 61 yards in 12 plays, a little over five minutes. Buzz having a good time down there with the Georgia Tech band. They're getting ready for halftime. So he puts that uniform on, then he can go around and hug all the girls. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a great disguise. <laughs> Everybody should have one. <laughs> Jamal Evans 
waits at the Georgia Tech goal line. He had a great kick return against Georgia last week in the losing effort to the Bulldogs. He won't get a chance, I don't think, to bring this out. Uh, he's going to take a knee at the very last moment. Hotel Music City. There's eight of them, if you're wondering. Here's Reggie Ball's going to keep it. And trying to throw a stiff arm and almost got tripped by the yard markers there. And Reggie today is having trouble finding his intended receivers. He's going deep a lot, but not getting much out of it. Exactly. There's four down this side, no completions, and he's one of two down there, so he's one of six throwing the deep ball. And what I think they should start to start doing is throwing the deep out, not the deep the takeoff routes, because he has he's not completing the deep and the deep uh, takeoffs, but throw the outs. The shard choice is the choice here on the ground. And Georgia Tech apparently is going to be content to go to the locker room. Tied up at halftime. We've got a quick timeout here with 52 seconds to play in the first half. So Wake Forest having taken a timeout, hoping to get the football back if Reggie Ball and Georgia Tech can't pick up seven yards on third down here. Single coverage on Calvin at the top. They'll run it. Choice trying to weave his way into Shard Choice. He's got a first down. So now Georgia Tech might utilize a timeout. On third down and a long seven, to Shard Choice has nine yards. And the clock stopped with 45 seconds remaining as they move the sticks. Now they start it up again. Georgia Tech might want to go on the offensive here a little bit more, with a little bit more urgency. Well, I just think if you got a guy like Calvin, just try and get him the ball and let him run some. Reggie Ball will run it instead. And that didn't go very far. A body with another tackle from his middle linebacker spot. He's had quite a first half defensively for the Demon Deacons defense. But he's one of those guys that Ness, when you look at him and he look after he makes a tackle, he looks back at the guy that ran the ball and he says, I don't think so. You know, don't <laughs> don't come around me. He's only 5'11. And he has 11 tackles in the first half. Reggie Ball limping off after that last run. A rain-soaked Altel Stadium, and Reggie Ball really limping as he heads to the locker room. He's had a problem all year long with his ankle, and that could be a recurring situation now. And that might have a big bearing on how the second half goes for the Georgia Tech offense. 3-3 three, three on a pair of... Field goals, Travis Bell for Georgia Tech, Sam Swank for Wake Forest. A lot of hard-hitting defense, and we're even at halftime. As, and both teams had to settle for field goals. So the third quarter set to start. Remember, Georgia Tech won the opening toss and took the ball, so Wake Forest gets it first in the second half. Kevin Marion directing traffic back there for the Demon Deacons as the kick return man, Muhammad Yayawi, has got it teed up for Georgia Tech. We're one half of football away from who's going to the Orange Bowl. And again, it's a short kick, and it's fielded by Marion at about the 11. And he blasts his way out across the 25, got to about the 28-yard line. Michael Johnson not only playing a lot on the defensive line, boy, is he some kind of special teams player at 6'7", 250. Let's check in with Bonnie. Brad, no surprise, Georgia Tech's Chan Gailey lamenting the missed opportunities downfield. He said, ideally, you want your guys to catch the ball or get the pass interference, but when we got the interference, we couldn't capitalize it. Defensively, he said he was surprised how much Wake was using uh, I'm sorry, how much he was using Kenneth Moore at quarterback. He said, we figured we'd line him up that way a couple of times, but we need to keep a much better eye on 21 in the second half. He's in there, but he's flanking Riley Skinner. He'll get the call on the first carry of the quarter, and he's done a nice job at tailback spot and as a wing T type quarterback. Philip Wheeler, the middle linebacker for Georgia Tech, makes the stop at about the 32-yard line. Remember, Moore was a wide receiver up until about four games ago, and now he's the number one rusher for this Wake Forest offense. Picked up four on the first carry of the second half. Skinner in the shotgun, and now again they take their time. Everybody gets up, re-huddles. Even that's about as unique as you're going to find in any place in college football. Yeah. They give it to Moore, now it's the end around coming the other way. Idolette trying to weave his way through traffic and came up about a yard short. The ball was blown dead as he got close to the first down marker out at about the 37-yard line. 
So Wake Forest on their opening march. Everybody talks about the third quarter and the opening drive of the third quarter being so important. And I know Wake Forest is thinking that right now. We welcome the commissioner of the ACC, John Swafford, longtime friend of mine in Kamish. Great host city, Jacksonville. We had a great time here this week. They've done a great job getting us off to our championship over the first two years. I really have. And uh, we'll talk more about this game in particular. We're going to have a penalty marker anyway. We, you and I talked about it yesterday at the luncheon, and everybody's been talking about it all week. Two teams, this is kind of what makes college football great, two teams that weren't supposed to be here. Well, it is. And in, in, in our first two years of our championship game, four different schools playing in the championship game, which I think gets it off to a great start and helps more of our league understand what a football championship game is all about. A five-yard penalty against Georgia Tech is going to give Wake Forest an automatic first down. We also have not only the player of the year, the rookie of the year, the offensive player of the year, and the coach of the year all in the same game. All right here, and that's appropriate. And, and the great thing is these are the two teams that have earned their way here, Brad, and that's what a championship game is all about is earning your way here. And uh, what a great reward, not only to, for the championship, but to go to the Orange Bowl. As we get set for a first down play for Wake Forest, first and 10. And they're going to give it off to Marion on an end around, trying to find the left corner. And a nice diving stop over there as Georgia Tech closes the door. What do you see the future of the ACC championship, John? Because uh, you're just getting started first couple of years, getting better every year. What's the future hold? Well, I think success for one thing, but we'll evaluate our first two years here in Jacksonville, uh, take a look at it over the next month or so, and then determine whether we'll take the option to come back here and keep it going or, or to move it around. We look at the SEC and the Big 12 both and try to learn from what they've done. They, they do it differently. Tech's going to stretch it out as Idolettes goes out of bounds. It'll bring up a third down. Well, we've had a great time, John, and uh, you as the overall host, but Jacksonville, the city itself, as a host. So great to see you. We'll Thanks. see you basketball season. Here, okay. John Swafford, Commissioner of Atlantic Coast Conference, good friend of ours. Good to have him with us up here. We're going to let him enjoy the rest of the ball game, and we'll get back to a third down for Wake Forest and a nine-yard to go on third down for the Demon Deacons. Georgia Tech trying to stop the opening march of the third quarter. Skinner in the gun. Here comes a Georgia Tech blitz, and it's all over him. And it's Darrell Robertson at a penalty marker at the end of the play. We might have we had a little scuffle going on down there between a couple of players, but it might have been a holding call on top of the sack. Oliver lost his lid down there, Adam Oliver, as he was involved in a little skirmish, but I don't think that's what the penalty's about. We might have a flag for that and a holding call. There's the holding on Wake Forest. Robertson. That ball. Personal foul on Georgia Tech. Wow. And that takes away yeah. a huge play by the Georgia Tech defense. Yeah. Robertson had a great jump and got the sack, but then the penalties are going to offset. Replay the play. Cherry is not turning on his microphone, but we're pretty sure that the penalty was on Adam Oliver of Georgia Tech as far as the personal foul. He was the one that was involved in an altercation with a Wake Forest player. I don't understand him asking. Holding. Offense. Offense. Number 75. That's a 10 yard penalty. That penalty would be administered. After the play was over, we've got a dead ball, personal foul, number 42. That penalty would be administered. First down. Yep, you go 10 one way and 15 the other, and it's first down Wake Forest. Oh, boy. Wow. What a huge mistake by Adam Oliver to get involved in a little skirmish at the end of the play. It negates the big sack by Darrell Robertson that would have forced a Wake Forest punt. Wake Forest, this is the opening drive of the third quarter at Altel Stadium in Jacksonville with Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, and Bonnie Bernstein. I'm Brad Nessler. This is for the overall Atlantic Coast Conference title and a trip to the BCS in the Orange Bowl. Wake Forest gets to keep their drive alive due to the personal foul penalty. And here's Moore taking the direct snap and taking a direct hit from about three Yellow Jackets led by K. Michael Hall, number 35, the linebacker who made initial contact. Here's the end of the play, the previous play where the penalty occurred. Right over here. It's right there on the corner. Now to us, of course, it looks like at the end of the play, you see Wake Forest, their offensive line, kind of roughing up Oliver. His helmet comes off, but apparently he was the first to strike the blow. Usually it's the second guy they catch. Well, I think, I think, <laughs> and I think uh, one of the offensive linemen there 
was kind of taking his time and rubbing everything in his face. Marion and end around. Kevin Marion's got four more into Georgia Tech territory at the 48-yard line. As we've got an update from Matt Weiner in New York. We've seen a lot of those double end arounds in this game, although they have not produced the big plays like that one. Third and six here. Skinner throwing over the middle, almost hit the umpire with it, intended for Kevin Marion. It's incomplete, and it's fourth down again. Brad, you're talking about those double reverses and all of the end around stuff that they're doing. The problem is, is the field is wet. And it takes too long to make that move. These guys can't make that sharp cut. They have to almost round it out when they when they get around the corner. And the speed of the defense, especially Georgia Tech, is just eating them up. They can't get outside. Georgia Tech's gotten close on a couple of punts today. Have not blocked one, and they've got the return on here. Swank kicks it away. Andrew Smith's going to let this one sail over his head, and it'll go into the end zone. So Georgia Tech will work from its own 20-yard line. Reggie Ball is set to go for the Georgia Tech offense. Three, three on a rainy day with a lot of defense. Reggie Ball comes up firing. Calvin Johnson's got it. And Johnson's across the 40 out to the 42-yard line. And this is much like the opening drive of the ball game started for Georgia Tech. That's exactly what they have to do. Just, just run Calvin Johnson down 10 or 15 yards and have him stop and drill him with the football. Watch this on the outside, single coverage, get him the ball and let him run. Don't try the deep stuff down the sideline, that's not working, so pull the outs in the curl. On first down, ball to throw again, and this time complete, Calvin Johnson again. So Bob Greasy is calling it for you. Into Wake Forest territory, a pickup of nine to the 49. So five balls thrown, to Calvin Johnson complete today, the only five completions that Reggie Ball has to this point. Exactly, he's, he's, uh, he's five completions, all five of them to Calvin. Just shaded into Wake Forest territory. Georgia Tech with a second down and a yard. Play action to choice, ball to throw again, better get rid of it. And he throws it way out there by the Demon Deacon mascot. And the penalty marker is Reggie Ball took a big hit from John Abadi. And I think it was too big a hit. John Abadi comes in and he hits Reggie just after he throws it with both of his hands. Illegal helmet contact, number five, defense. That's a 15 yard penalty. First half. So uh, as great a game as Abadi's had at middle linebacker, uh, he'd like to have this one back. Well, he's, he's taking a run now. And, you know, it's one of those guys, he, he hit him in the face with both forearms, and that's what they called it for. You figure, well, if I'm going to run this far, I'm going to hit him anyway. Boy, did he ever. So the personal foul takes it all the way inside the Wake Forest 35. You know, it really wasn't a forceful uh, you know, a mean-spirited hit, but it was up around the head, and I'd like to see that. You know, I think we need more of that in college football. You mean more of the protection on the quarterback, exactly. not more of the hits to the no, head. Exactly. Reggie to throw, firing complete. This time it's James Johnson. And James Johnson's got a first down, and Reggie Ball is slow to get up again. That time he took a hit from Aaron Curry. A little jawing going on between those two. These are just linebackers just teeing off on this guy. Now, this shot here was, you know, he hit him with his uh, face and his arms, but it was low enough. They're talking now. Yeah, yeah. I'll help you out. Just a minute. You he let said, him help you up. I'm not. Yeah, no, no. Reggie says, here, I'll help you. The guy said, I'll help you up. Reggie says, I don't want your help. <laughs> I want my offensive lineman. Come on over here. Give me help, some help up here. First down at the 23-yard line. Reggie Ball. Firing wide side, completes it, ball is out, it's incomplete. They're going to call it an incomplete pass to James Johnson. Well, Reggie Ball does all his talking in the huddle, too, and Calvin Johnson says, you know, when Reggie talks, you listen. He takes control of the huddle. I mean, if someone was talking, he'd tell you to shut up. You know, if anything, anything that's, that's going on in the huddle that's not supposed to be going on, he, he immediately stops that, you know, and everybody, it's all ears when he starts talking. And, and as a quarterback, you have to do that. I'm sure that Riley Skinner on the other side does the same thing, even though he's a redshirt freshman, and he carries everybody's books and everything off the field. <laughs> when you get in that huddle and somebody's talking, you say, shut up. Reggie Ball, and he's going to go down, and it's a body again, and now a body can do the talking. A loss of four, and it brings up third down and long. Man, what a game this kid has had. I think that's his 12th tackle. 
and we're early in the third quarter. Ness, he reads so well. I mean, he just sees the holes open up, and that time, he just he just flew in and hit Reggie Ball at the feet. He knew he couldn't tackle him around the waist, so he got him at the feet. But this guy really reads offenses perfectly. Third down and 14 now. The shard choice with Reggie Ball of the Georgia Tech shotgun. And it's going to be choice on the inside. Taking it straight up the middle. He almost got a first down. He's only a yard short, and now Georgia Tech will probably go for this, or they'll have an opportunity for a field goal. They were not in field goal range for Travis Bell before that run. Take a look from behind the offense. They were double covering Calvin that time. I mean, only seven to stop the run. The offensive line did a nice job of creating some spaces. I think he's going to be just short. Reggie Ball's looking to the sideline, and on a fourth and one, Chan Gailey says, let's go get it. He's trying to get a measurement. Is, uh, is Reggie Ball, and they won't give it to him. He wanted to buy some time. Mike Cox comes in as a fullback. They're going to have time. They better hurry. Fourth and one, Reggie Ball straight ahead. I don't know. I don't, I don't like think that. so. I don't like that. If you're rushed, take a timeout. They didn't get it, guys. They did not get it. Not where the, not where the linesman is marking this ball unless they move him around. But you're absolutely right, Grease. Chan Gailey was screaming for a measurement because he wanted that time. And then, then Reggie Ball was screaming for a measurement. And as you said, the clock went down. They had to go in a hurry. Well, neither, now they're going to get a measurement. I'm sorry. Neither one got what they wanted, a, a measurement to buy some time. Well, it's so then one. they got a play in to go on. It, and then they're all, they get to the line of scrimmage. I, I don't like going for a fourth down play this big. And you have to hurry up. Wake Forest takes over on downs. Georgia Tech had a great drive going. A great drive going, and it stopped on fourth and one. And, here, and here's the thing. You've got a senior quarterback that has started 49 games. He has to take control. Just like you take control in the huddle, you take control at the line of scrimmage, and if it's not right, take a timeout. A body came over the top to wrap up Reggie Ball and Wake Forest offense on the field just outside its own 13-yard line. Kevin Harris now is the tailback as Wake Forest has got an eye backfield in, but they still run the end around to Idolette. And Idolette is run out of bounds, short gain, if any, by Gary Guyton. Yeah, so, you know, I mentioned it once before when they, when they had the ball. These wide plays, there's too much speed on Georgia Tech. And the ground is slick, so they can't make the real sharp cuts. They have to run everything wide. What happens is when you run wide like that, there's no yardage to be picked up. It's second down and 10. Yep. Well, the plays, all the misdirection, and as many times as Georgia Tech blitzes, you either think that Wake Forest is going to gash you for a big play, or it could be a 15-yard loss going the other direction. On second and 10, the inside handoff this time to Marion. And Marion found a little room. Georgia Tech closes in on him as he crossed the 20-yard line down to about the 21. They're in the spotlight right now, and so is D'Angelo Bryant, who's going to take the direct snap. And Georgia Tech's waiting on this one. Darrell Robertson makes another big play from his defensive end spot. And as I said, it could be a big play one way or it can be a five-yard loss going the other way, and that's what happened on that one. You know, the other thing, too, is that you don't have a quarterback really in the game, so they know you're not going to throw the football. They just, load, Georgia Tech just loaded up. They load up on the line of scrimmage. Now, you look, nobody's playing pass. They don't care about pass. All they're caring about is, is this guy running the ball. And look at the black shirts or dark blue shirts that run the ball. Sam Swank's in a tough spot inside his own five. Got the kick away. Andrew Smith's going to let it bounce. Oh, boy. That's a big time Wake Forest bounce. About 18 more yards yeah. after it landed. And it goes for 51 yards. Georgia Tech will have it back on offense, though. We got a 3 3 tie here in the third quarter. Third quarter and a tie game at 3 3 as Georgia Tech takes the field. Paul? I'm just down there watching right behind Chan Gailey. He lost his headset. And, you know, <laughs> at first he couldn't get a measurement. Now he can't get a headset, can't hear anything. <laughs> Still wanting to lose his head completely. First down for his offense, the 33-yard line. Reggie Ball is going to get hit as he throws, and it's a one-hopper to Calvin Johnson. Incomplete, and Aaron Curry applying the pressure to Reggie Ball as we check in in New York. Here's Matt Wyatt. That follows 
us from Jacksonville. We've got six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Both wide receivers down to the bottom of your screen, including Calvin Johnson in the slot. But the give is to Tashar Choice. And Choice, nice run out to about the 40-yard line. And John Russell made the stop. John Abadi made the initial hit, and he's handing Tashar Choice his, his towel back. And Tashar's going, thanks, John. <laughs> Abadi, Abadi last year was number 40, the junior out of Powder Springs. He wears number five now in honor of his little brother, Luke, who was killed in a tragic car accident back in February. And that's what Luke's number was in high school. And now he wears number five, and his little brother was really a big part of this Wake Forest program. And at the end of the fourth quarter, at the end of the third quarter, they all hold up five fingers for Luke and for John, who's had one heck of a game today. Reggie Ball, pump fake, and then going long in the sideline. And another flag, as he intended it for James Johnson. And it's going to be pass interference on Alfonso Smith. So they keep trying those deep balls on the sideline. They're not completing them, but they're getting a lot of yellow out there. It just looked like their feet got tied up. Uh, you know, I, I think they got to talk about this one. Let's take a look. Here it is. Defensive pass interference. Number two. Yeah. 15 yeah. yards on the previous spot. Automatic first down. As soon as Smith put his right arm out and, and kept the receiver's hands down and wasn't looking back at the ball, that was interference. The third pass interference penalty on Wake Forest today. And all of those passes intended either for James or Calvin Johnson. Now Georgia Tech now has a first down in Wake Forest territory at the 45-yard line. There's Calvin Johnson in the slot. They've gone to him a lot on first down throws. Here, they'll give it to Tashard Choice, banging his way down to about the 41-yard line. Ten wins for the first time in school history. Two wins better than ever before. And wanting to go to the Orange Bowl as the BCS overall ACC champion. Georgia Tech's got other ideas. The Coastal Division champs. They've got a second down and six. Reggie Ball, play action now, rolling to run and throw. And in and out of the hands of Calvin Johnson. You're not going to see that very often. And that was a heck of a throw, moving to his right and running out of real estate, and Calvin just dropped it. There's a corner on the corner blitz. The safety, Gaddis, comes over. Calvin stops. He may go out of bounds or here, and then he comes back in, but he drops the ball. It doesn't matter. Even the best don't catch them all. It's third down and six. Third down and six. Let's third see down. if they go back to him. Big third down for both teams here late in the third quarter. Ball's in trouble, runs away from some of it, and now he's going to try to tuck it and get there. I don't know. I think he got it. He got it. That's maybe the best play of the day by Reggie Ball, and it's on the ground. It looks like a first down. It's his umbrella right here. <laughs> it's my umbrella. Don't bother it, man. It's, it's Re I'll tell you, this, this is a great run by Reggie Ball because he's he really doesn't have this. And watch him extend himself, but watch him use his speed right about now. He knows he's got to get to the sidelines, and he's got about another yard to go and dives for it. That's just heads up play. That's your senior. And on first down, comes back to the air, and Calvin Johnson, the intended receiver. Nice play that time by Riley Swanson. And Reggie bent over at the end of that play. Three times today, he has rushed for a first down on third down. A little over four minutes remaining in this one. And a reminder, time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty Colorado postgame report. Scores and highlights with John and Craig and Doug in New York. Doug, by the way, was the uh, legend inductee from Boston College at our luncheon yesterday and obviously had to uh, be in New York to work with the guys. But our congratulations to... Doug, the former Heisman Trophy winner, for another honor. Here's Calvin Johnson on the catch and got swarmed under by about half the Wake Forest team, led by John Russell. Only got a pickup of a couple. Hey, Ness, I, I, I realize now what Calvin looked at when he caught the ball. He caught the ball at a little short hitch about a yard. And soon as he looked, as soon as he looked up, watch to his right. He's got a boom, he catches now. Look, oops, these are all white shirts. <laughs> <laughs> this is the pass I wanted. One team's colors are old gold and black. That's Wake Forest. Georgia Tech's colors are old gold and white. 
here comes the white jerseys at Reggie Ball throws down the middle incomplete. Nice job defensively by Riley Swanson again. And Riley Swanson played at the same high school as Calvin Johnson, Sandy Creek High School in Fayetteville, Georgia. In fact, they've got four players from that team on these rosters, and three of them are playing in the game. So I was kidding around telling coaches around the country, you might want to head to Sandy Creek High School, get down there and see what they got. Uh -huh. so they got some good ones in here. And that's just remember, Bob, that the last time they had uh, fourth and long, and even third and long, Reggie Ball ran a quarterback draw. Now, I don't know if he's doing that on this one or not. They've had a couple fourth downs. He threw an interception on one and came up short on the other. This time, he's looking to throw and has plenty of time. And now the time is running out. He's got a deep. He's got a man down in the end zone. Just over the outstretched arms of Cal uh, James Johnson. But he had another wide receiver coming right across the middle of the end zone. Threw it to the wrong guy. That was Chris Dunlop. They had him open in the back of the end zone, number 88. And they don't throw it to him, Grease. Let's go ahead and run it. Reggie does a nice job. Everything's covered at this point. Now he starts to scramble. Now here's the guy that's going to break open. Go ahead. Right here. Stop it. We'll stop it right here. Right there is the receiver. He ends up throwing to the receiver at the bottom of the screen, but the one in the middle of the picture was wide open. And that was see, Dunlop. You see Chris Dunlop's reaction as obviously he was open by 15 yards, and Reggie Ball didn't see him. And now timeout's going to be taken by Wake Forest as Kenneth Moore wasn't out on the field. Timeout with three minutes remaining third quarter. Presentation of college football on ABC brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Cold day, you got to be a hearty fan. You bundle up, you get your cap on backwards. You got Calvin Johnson standing in front of you. You can barely see the field. <laughs> First down run is Kevin Harris and a flag down on the field. Penalty marker with 2.54 remaining. It's going to be a holding call against Wake Forest, and they're going the wrong way. Wake Forest, their last six drives, punts, a field goal that made and one that missed. Four punts and a two field goal attempts. Georgia Tech has only a field goal, too, by Travis Bell in the first quarter. And Georgia Tech's been stopped on fourth down on three occasions already today as they're playing for the ACC championship and a trip to the Orange Bowl. Key play in the game, fourth and one. Georgia Tech trying to rush a play instead of calling a timeout. And Reggie Ball, with John Abadi on top of him, came up well short. And that could have been uh, the, that could have led to a touchdown he's or at least a, another field goal. Reggie's a tough kid, but he's also hard-headed. You know, he probably said, we can do this. We can get up the line of scrimmage and run this play. Take your time, get everything settled, especially on fourth and inches. D'Angelo Bryant again is going to take the direct snap, the running back, and he's going nowhere. Georgia Tech, I think, has got this thing wow. figured out right now. Joe Anawai with a stop and a loss on the play. This is a, they call it a, a, a perimeter, a run perimeter offense. You run east and west sideways, and, and John Tenuta was telling us, we need to contain it and, and stop him from getting outside and force the quarterback to win this thing, and that's what they're doing. Second down at 21. Skinner back in there at quarterback. Here comes Georgia Tech. Straight blitz by K. Michael Hall, and he almost got there. Skinner throws it away. Boy, you talk about a perfectly timed blitz and a wide open hole to run through. And K. Michael Hall, <laughs> he came in there like a steam engine. From behind Skinner, there it opens right Whoops. up. <laughs> and this is a great job by a young quarterback. This is why the Wake coaches have said, hey, he's earned our trust in not throwing interceptions and especially avoiding sacks and throwing the ball away like he did. Longest third down of the day for Wake Forest. Third down and 21. This is where you don't want to make a mistake. If you're Wake Forest on offense, Georgia Tech pinning their ears back, and they're going to bring K. Michael Hall again on a blitz, and he almost got to Skinner again and almost picked off by Phillip Wheeler. Yeah, that was a freshman mistake because the chances of picking up third and 21 are nil. And a chance of a turnover, which they haven't done all year, right. is pretty good. 
Well, Bob Phillip Wheeler was playing the linebacker on the left-hand side. Watch where he has to come from to almost make this catch. Here comes Wheeler right now. He was already on the way on the right side of the field, came back to the left side, and almost got the interception. Georgia Tech's been close on some of their punt rushes today. Troy Garside's gotten close a couple of times. Nice job by Swank to get it away. Smith's got a back pedal all the way to the 31. And nothing but white jerseys there. 48-yard kick and very little on the return. New Year's Day, it's the granddaddy of them all. You want to join ABC for the pageantry and excitement that makes this game one of the great traditions in college football. Don't miss the 93rd edition of the Rose Bowl game presented by City. Coverage begins New Year's Day, 4.30 Eastern on ABC. Let's check in with Bonnie. Well, Brad, with Jim Grove propelling his team to the best record in school history, not surprising his name's been bandied about for coaching vacancies. We'll get to the rest of it in just a sec. And it's to Shard Choice. Nice run out near the 40. Back to Bonnie. Yeah, the main coaching vacancy is at Alabama, but when we talked to Coach Grove about it, he didn't want anything to do with it. He said, I am not looking for other jobs. I don't have an agent. I'm not throwing my hat into the ring. He said, I've been around long enough to realize that sometimes the grass isn't always greener on the other side. I've got 14 juniors coming back, a great athletic director, a great president. Things can always change, but I don't want to go anywhere. He's the coach of the year in the ACC by a landslide. Deshard Choice, close, might have gotten it. Aaron Curry made the stop. 53 seconds left. He's got 15 starters coming back from this team, seven offense and eight on defense, and he's got his all-conference kicker back also. And that always helps. So Georgia Tech will get a first down out across the 43-yard line. Reggie Ball, boy, he's got a lot of chalk on that jersey. He's been from sideline to sideline and every spot in between. And he's been hit when he's throwing. He's been hit when he's running. And he's back to throw again. Going to his left, and he'll keep it and go out of bounds. Got positive yardage in front of his own bench. And Jim Grobe, we talked about being the ACC Coach of the Year. He talked with us about what Wake Forest to him is all about. Not only being good on the football field, but being good in the classroom and being good off the field, having good character, having good kids. Uh, that, that's our goal for Wake Forest football. We want to win football games, but we want to do it the right way. Uh, yesterday, talking about his wife, Holly, actually being the head coach of Wake Forest. He's just kind of a coordinator. She kind of keeps it all together. <laughs> exactly. Reggie Ball back to throw. Plenty of time. Going deep middle. In and out of the hands of James Johnson. And this happened last week against Georgia. I don't want to say James Johnson short-armed that one. He didn't. He laid out to make the catch but didn't hold on. And twice against the Bulldogs last week, he had the same situation. And he got tagged both times in that game, too. He got he gets nailed by Chip Vaughn, number nine, just throw, as the ball throw gets it there. Quicker, throw it quicker. Get the, you, need, you need to have the ball hanging in there so when he gets into the open area, the ball is there for him. This is a fourth drop ball by Georgia Tech today, and there's the hit that Paul's talking about. Chip Vaughn, the sophomore of Fairfax, Virginia, and he's a big guy, 6'2", 215, and just bangs into James Johnson's ribs as he was up in the air and vulnerable trying to make that catch. Jay Shoup, the head of the athletic training facility at Georgia Tech, out there to make sure he's okay. And meanwhile, it's going to be third down at about six. Well, that wasn't his primary target. His primary, he was looking somewhere else to throw the ball, and then Reggie Ball saw Johnson going down, James Johnson going down the middle of the field, and that's why he laid it a little bit late. Wake Forest plays smart on the field. They play smart in the classroom. How are they referring to this bowl game as the brain bowl? You did. <laughs> you did. I didn't say that. You did. I didn't. I mean, I I, I stole it. I, I <laughs> Who'd you steal it from? Not I, me. I, 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 McGuire. Me, I, I got think, it from me. I think he came up with that dumb dumb thought. I think <laughs> it's a battle between the Atlantic Division and the Coastal Division champions. That's what it is. Third down and six. Reggie Ball pump fake. And now deep down the sideline again. Calvin Johnson makes the catch as he inbounds yes he is finally a long one down the sideline works for the yellow jackets that's a stop and go there we got a good shot of it we'll stop and go 
Johnson is 6'5", and Antonio Smith is 5'9". It's just the uh, mismatch that they like. Alfonso Smith, the sophomore, giving away a lot of height there. First catch of 15th catch, I beg your pardon, of over 20 yards for Calvin Johnson this year. Now back on the ground. Tishard Choice got a big opening in the middle. And he's inside the 20 and down near the 18-yard line. A body and our new combined on the stop. Tishard Choice just keeps grinding out yards. Again, he's kind of the overlooked guy in the ball game, but he's got 101 on the ground. Georgia Tech at the end of three. On the marks, we'll switch into the field, and 15 minutes from now, we'll crown a champion. They'll be cheering for their defense, and there's the five fingers up in honor of John Abadi's little brother, who wore number five, and now his big brother having the defensive game of his life. He is hoping that his defense can stop Georgia Tech as the Yellow Jackets have moved into the red zone as we start the fourth quarter. Battle for the ACC championship. 14 tackles already on the day. Here's Reggie Ball on second and short. And Reggie Ball is going to get maybe within a yard of the first down marker. So Georgia Tech on the drive, but they've been down here before. They've only come away with one field goal so far today. They've got a third down and one. And the main thing right now is to hold on to the football, not turn it over. But they don't want to come up with a fourth down situation either because they haven't been very good in that capacity. <laughs> They've turned it over. They've turned it over the last two times. I don't mean takeaways, but on downs. They've got four downs and out the last two possessions. Here's a big third down for Georgia Tech. The shard choice hit in the backfield. I don't know. It's going to be very close. Going to be very, very close to the yellow line. Now the linesman comes yeah. up and puts his foot down. It yeah. looks like it's short again. Got to kick the field. Probably going to be a fourth down. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Bonnie Bernstein with you from Altel Stadium in Jackson. A lot of people yeah. pretty much think that uh, Troy Smith of Ohio State might be the guy that uh, would win it. He certainly has been the leader all season long, it appears. Georgia Brady, Tech with a fourth and inches. Brady, and there Quinn. was Brady Quinn's had an outstanding year. And but you know you haven't heard many people receiving today but Georgia Tech still doesn't have a touchdown Travis Georgia Bell Tech. was out to attempt a field goal and Georgia Tech's going to take a timeout just 57 seconds into the fourth and final quarter a big big kick coming up for the Yellow Jackets when we come back you're watching ESPN on ABC Georgia Tech's got a fourth down in less than a yard they've lined up Travis Bell for a field goal attempt when he was a freshman, he hit 20 of his first 22 field goals. Last year, an up and down season, though he did have four from 40, three from 40 plus against Wake Forest. This is the biggest 34 yarder maybe of his life. They try to put Georgia Tech in front. Bell, the kick on the way, and he's got it. Georgia Tech regains the lead. Travis Bell from 34. And Georgia Tech six, Wake Forest three, with just under 14 minutes left in the ballgame. Dr. Pepper stats through three quarters. Not a lot of offense there for Wake Forest, Grease. Not much. 128 yards total offense. 52 yards of rushing. So, you know, this is, this is, if you're an offensive guy, this, you don't like these stats, I want to tell you. Six points scored by Georgia Tech. Three, Georgia Tech scored on their first drive of the game. And then they scored on their la on their ninth drive of the game. Well, three possessions in the red zone for Georgia Tech, and they have two field goals and lost it on downs once. That capped a 50-yard drive, though. Pretty good-looking drive. Calvin Johnson had a big catch in there. Tashar Choice had a couple of timely runs, and so did Reggie Ball. And 50 yards in 2 minutes 42 seconds gives them the lead. A reminder at the conclusion. Now our game today will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. To honor their determination, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Wake Forest, three and out on their last two possessions. There's a little Yellow Jacket fan that doesn't care about the rain. He's got it going on. Well, this, it's been misty. Well, play misty for me, will you? Please? It's been <laughs> raining the entire game. Rain, not raining rain, but misty. And, if, and again, the field is slick. But I think Wake Forest has got to get back in this ball game. They've got to throw the ball. Yayawi has got it teed up. Alfonso Smith and Kevin Marion, number 14 right there, wait on the other end. That Kevin Marion might be their best chance of scoring. That's a good point. He's got all kinds of speed. That was a 
33 yard kickoff return to his credit this year. This is Smith though from about the eight. Alfonso Smith and he's got a crease on the left side. Run out of bounds after he crossed the 35 out a 30 yard return and Riley Skinner Bonnie's got to take over here and the pressure's on. Absolutely, but the interesting story is, Brad, that if Wake didn't offer him that 11th hour scholarship, he may very well be going to Georgia Tech, but not as a football player, as just a regular old student. Tech didn't offer him a scholarship. He didn't want to walk on, but his dad played baseball there, so it was kind of appealing to him. He's a Southern guy, wanted to stay there. The only scholarship offers he really had were Hawaii and one AA Sanford, but Wake came in at the uh, at the late hour shortly before the signing date, and you know, the rest is history. The last scholarship that year, right? Riley got now he's a starting quarterback. Fakes it on the end around. Wants to throw. Tech won't let him. Down he goes at the 29. And it's Daryl Robertson. And that's his second sack of the day. Joe NOI is there too. Fourth sack for John Tenuta's Yellow Jacket defense today. That may be the only thing that he really does wrong. I mean, he's a very bright young man, but the one thing he's got, he's got too much confidence in that offensive line. Look how long he stays in there. Now he gets away, he's got people open, he gets away, and he still stands in there trying to throw the football. He just, I mean, he's hard to bring down, but I think he's got to get, get rid of it faster. They only have eight yards of offense in this half. Georgia Tech, the blitz again. Skinner fires, completes it out. The Rinfret, Rinfret diving for what might be a first down. He's got it. Great second effort by Mike Rinfret. The redshirt freshman out of Lewisburg, North Carolina. He's a third string fullback coming into the game, only had one catch on the year. And here he makes a big play, gets him a first down and gets him a momentum going. Nice move right here and then a big leap. Big play for Wake Forest offense. They got it out to the 48 yard line. Skinner. Firing deep sideline, almost caught. Kenny Scott with a coverage. Kevin Marion diving attempt at the football incomplete. I guess they don't call pass interference against Georgia Tech. How can you, <laughs> how can you see it from where you're sitting? Hey, I can see everything, even though the rain and I've got a camera in front of me, but you know, I've got terrific eyes, one on each side of my nose. <laughs> You get, that's, that's pass interference. I'm telling you, it's, look at, you talk about the arm before Greece, it doesn't count when the other guys do it. He grabbed his arm. Are you yelling at me or are you talking no, to me? I'm yelling over this crowd. <laughs> the, the players are right here trying to whack me. Second down and 10. Skinner looking left, coming out in the flat, incomplete, intended for his other fullback, Belton, and he got it too far out in front of him. And now it's third down and 10. Third down and 10. Kevin Harris in there as Moore's out with an ankle injury, but maybe back. Skinner running for his life and throws incomplete, and it's fourth down. So Georgia Tech's defense comes up with a stop, and the Demon Deacons will have to punt it away. Well, there was nobody open downfield. Good coverage and good pressure. Sam Swank will have to punt. Wake Forest wanting to get something going offensively. Got it almost to midfield, and now they're forced to kick. And Georgia Tech's Andrew Smith waits on the other end. Georgia Tech with a 6-3 lead in a soggy defensive struggle for the ACC championship. And Smith makes the fair catch at about the 17-yard line. 12 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the ballgame. Georgia Tech's got the ball in a three-point lead when we come back. River in downtown Jacksonville. We're in Jacksonville at Altel Stadium with 12 minutes and 10 seconds remaining to an ACC championship. Georgia Tech with the lead in the ball. And Reggie Ball set to throw. Going deep down the left sideline for Calvin Johnson. Intercepted by Riley Swanson on the deflection. Maybe they went one too many times deep down the sideline. Well, I was just about to say that this is what Wake needs is an interception or a turnover. Johnson had plenty of chance to catch it. But this is a great play by Swanson to stay alive, see what's going on, and catch the ball after Calvin misplayed it. This, so is, the, 
this has been the this has been the mo for wake forest all season long their offense has not been real aggressive outscoring they just said don't make any mistakes let the defense help us and that time the defense got the turnover to get them started on this drive skinner on first down pump fakes and goes incomplete intended for his tight end, John Terry. But was it that perfect timing by Calvin Johnson? I mean, he went up in the air just at the perfect time, just couldn't hold on to the ball. Riley Skinner's only one out of eight this half, and he's running from Robertson again, and it, oh, that one almost came out of there. Georgia Tech say they have the ball, but I think it's incomplete. Kevin Harris was the intended receiver out of the tailback spot. Our Pacific Life. Game summary, Travis Bell capped off Georgia Tech's opening drive with a 21-yard field goal. That gave him a 3-0 lead. Sam Swank missed one from 45 that would have tied the ball game, but he did come back and hit a 19-yarder, a chip shot from the right hash. 3-3 at that point, and then Travis Bell, not that long ago, a 34-yarder here late in the ball game, has given Georgia Tech a 6-3 advantage. Kevin Harris, the guy that had that pass in his hands before Georgia Tech popped him with about four defenders around him is the guy that's down and in some obvious pain they're working on his left leg or knee over near the far sideline in front of the Wake Forest bench. Jim Grove is going to we can't have any more injuries. We've had enough all season long including the starting quarterback in his starting tailback time permitting stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report. As John Craig and Doug have all the scores and highlights, Kevin Harris limping off, and he's got a brace on that left knee to start with, so his day is probably done. Kenneth Moore injured his ankle and was expected to return. So D'Angelo Bryant, they're really down to the third guy of their six guys if you went through the whole season that's yeah. playing tailback right now. Right. Wake Forest is 0 for their last seven third down conversions. Third and 10 here. Skinner with pressure over the middle. Got it in Marion's hands, but flags will fly. It might be a face mask on Jamal Lewis. First of all, Brad, there was off, offside by the defense. That second, there was a face mask. You're absolutely correct. And not only that, I think Jamal didn't mean to do it, but got his hand stuck in the cage, and I think he's hurt his hand because of it. I don't think he could get it out. I don't think he wanted it in to start with and then couldn't get it out. You know, it's one of those deals where the guy's running. Hold on. We have two fouls on the play. Those fouls will offset when I finish explaining. <laughs> we have an illegal formation. Offense. We have a face mask. Defense. Number four. Decline. I like that. <laughs> When I get done explaining, you'll when, know exactly what it's all about. That's right. When I get done explaining, just listen and don't boo me yet. <laughs> Jamal Lewis trying to shake it off. First team all ACC performer from his safety spot. Well, here comes another big third down for Wake Forest. Another try right here. Georgia Tech lining up to try to bring that fifth man or maybe more. Skinner pressured, double pumps and throws complete. Tereshinsky is tight end down the sideline. John Tereshinsky with a huge first down. I'm going to tell you something. Riley Skinner just grew up. I mean, he really grew up fast. But this play here, watch him, and he has to step up. Now, you know, a lot of young guys will, will panic, but he doesn't. He just steps up. Look at him. He's thinking about running. Then he takes the ball down and throws the Tereshinsky down the field. What an outstanding play. A great balance by Tereshinsky to stay inbounds and get extra yardage. A career-long 39-yard catch for Tereshinsky. And Wake Forest has got something working with just under 11 minutes remaining in the ballgame. It looked like he may have stepped out of bounds up the ways a little bit. The previous play is under review. This is what, this is the, let's take a look. I think his next right foot, right there. Mm, that's close. But that, you, not from that angle, Bob, they can't show it. I mean, it's they can't do anything yeah. with it. He's still tiptoeing. I'll tell you what, John's a big guy, 6'3", 240, and his brother, Joe Tereshinsky, is uh, quarterback at Georgia and started a good portion of the year for the Bulldogs. So the Tereshinsky family's been running back and forth between SEC games and ACC games all season long. Yeah. And I don't know if... Uh, 
they're going to bring that back at all or not because that was awfully close. Yep. And now the rain coming down more heavily. They're not going to overtone that. So Wake Forest trying to get to that Georgia Tech end zone. They haven't been there all day. Neither team has. Six to three, three field goals. Hard-hitting defense by both the Demon Deacons and the Yellow Jackets. And both teams trying to get to the Orange Bowl. And there's 11 minutes left to decide this one. And they're still Review. reviewing. The play stands as called on the field. So John Tereshinsky gets all 39 yards of it. And he's got a huge, huge first down for Wake Forest. Yeah, you couldn't overturn the call on the field from that one replay that we saw. And they're inside the Georgia Tech 30. And that was on a third and long. And Skinner pumped once, brought it back down, and then threw it to his tight end for the biggest play of the day so far for the Demon Deacons. Wake Forest is used to coming back in the fourth quarter and winning these things. D'Angelo Bryant found a big opening, and he's got another first down. 11 yards on the carry. You know why these things work so well when they run inside like that is because the offensive line stays with their blocks a long period of time. Watch these guys block in the, in, in the line. Look at these guys hold on to the blocks. They stay on their man, so now they, the back has got an option. I'm going to take either go left, cut back to the middle, or go back to my right. Longest run of the day for Wake Forest, 11 yards. And Tereshinsky, who had that reception two plays ago, had a big block on that play that got D'Angelo Bryant about the last five. Here they come. Here's an eye backfield. Haven't seen that much. Bryant runs right into Adam Oliver. That's going to be a loss of one. Every snap becomes important at that 10-minute mark and under. Georgia Tech rushing yards today, most of it to Shard Choice. Third down conversions today, Wake Forest 3 for 13, but none bigger than the one a few moments ago on a third and 10. Tereshinsky got the ball down the sideline. Now it's second down and 11, and we're under 10 minutes to play. Skinner to Bryant, the end around coming to Idolette. And Idolette goes down at about the 17-yard line. Avery Robertson made the tackle. Did you see the block by Skinner? Joe Hanaway. <laughs> Skinner didn't pick, pick on, a, uh, on a defensive back or a linebacker. He picked on the biggest guy on the, on the field. <laughs> Here's another third down. <laughs> 52 yards so far. Their longest of the day. And now third down and eight. Skinner looking right. going to go to his safety valve out there in the flat. He slips and goes down. No gain. Rich Belton, I don't think he would have got away from Kenny Scott anyway, but we'll never know. Fourth down and eight. And that it. probably is going to mean you Sam Swank will yeah. come in to try to tie it up. Got to kick it. You got to tie the game. Remember Swank, one of the best kickers in college football, missed one earlier from 45, and then he hit one from 19. They're going to try this one from 33 yards away. Played at Jacksonville Beach, Fletcher High School. Another hometown boy. Trying to make good here in Jacksonville. From 33 to try to tie the game. Swank got it right down Main Street. And we're tied. So the Demon Deacons have tied things up. The Yellow Jackets get the next chance. Who's going to win it? Stick around. It's for the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship and a trip to the Orange Bowl, and we still haven't decided anything. 6-6 six, six tie on four field goals, eight minutes and 27 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Bonnie Bernstein. Who's going to go to the Orange Bowl? We're going to find out here shortly. Will it be the team that has the ball last? Swank, who hit the field goals, got it teed up. And Jamal Evans, the freshman for Georgia Tech, awaits at the goal line. Deep kick, dropped, and now Evans will have to take a knee. A lot of football left today, and eight minutes left here. Reggie Ball to throw on first down. Calvin Johnson makes the catch, pick up a 13 or 14, and a Georgia Tech first down. That has been there almost all day long. They're single covering Calvin 
most of the time. This, this guy is used to being double covered every play all season long. And, and against Wake Forest, last year they didn't double cover right. him. And again today, they're not double covering. But how many points has Wake Forest given up? They've only given up. Not a touchdown. They, they, they really haven't hurt him by not doubling Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson has eight catches for 117 yards. Now Reggie Ball and a quarterback keeper. Nice move to the outside and then dives forward to about the 40. And for a guy that was limping to the locker room at halftime, that was a pretty nifty looking little run. Wake Forest has lived off of turnovers by their defense. Their offense has been very low-keyed, very protective. They lost their running back. They lost their quarterback earlier in the year, Brad, as you've said. And they've had these red-shirt freshmen fill in. So the defense has been the big daddy that's gone out there and taken care of the offense. They forced 20 turnovers in the last seven games in three and a half quarters. Second down at five. They're going to bring a blitz off the corner. The shard choice picks that blitz up. The pass, though, intended for Greg Smith is incomplete. Nice coverage by Riley Swanson as we check in with Matt in New York. The Calvin Smith of the left coast. Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, who's Calvin Smith? <laughs> Reggie Ball throwing incomplete. Intended for Greg Smith. That's where my Smith came in. Josh Gaddis with the coverage. How good is how good is USC? I mean, take a look. Smith, Smith is number five. But how good? What a great job Pete Carroll's done. That looked like a little uh, interference there, but I don't want to call it because Paul will get all upset. He'll yell at you again. Oh yeah. Don't call it. Don't even think about calling it. Duran Brooks, who has been sensational for Georgia Tech, is a punter, a finalist for the Ray Guy Award. Set to kick. He would love to pin Willie Idolette back inside his own 15-yard line somewhere. Low snap. The kick is deep. I mean, way too deep, maybe. And it is into the end zone. 61-yard punt, but it's coming back out to the 20. And Riley Skinner says, OK, I'm only a freshman. But this is where we go to work, fellas. We got 6.43 to try to win the ACC championship. Let's get it in gear. Right now, the ACC championship yet to be determined. And a berth in the BCS and the Orange Bowl on the line in the next six minutes and 40 seconds. And now it's Wake Forest turn. Riley Skinner comes up throwing on first down across the middle, completes it out to the 25 to Zach Selman, his tight end. That would tell me we're going to go in the pits with Ballas, number 75, who is an all conference player. Had his work cut out with him, cut out for him. There, he gave Adam Oliver a little, little headbutt. Head That's a little nice. Yeah, that was a little, uh, <laughs> a little payback for something that the guy did to him. Second down and five. That's what goes on in the pits. Yeah, it's fun stuff. Skinner fires complete, perfect pass. Nate Morton's out of bounds with a first down. There's a guy I'm surprised they haven't thrown the ball too much. Is is, is work because they're they're covering him one on one on the outside and. You know, you just think that you would throw more to him. But again, if you don't have that much time back there. But you're in the pits guy, Bobby. He, can, he learned how to hold early, didn't he? Headbutt and hold. Morton up to that point had been shut out since midway through the second quarter. Now he's got his team a first down at the 39-yard line. Skinner, quick throw out wide to Idolette. Oh, head-on collision out there with Jahi Ward Daniels. And they're both clearing their eyes a little bit after that one. <laughs> I'd have let him that big. He's no. only 5'10 and 175. But he's a tough kid. Well, he threw the block of the day. We know that. Yeah. Uh, K. Michael Hall earlier in the ball game it sent K. Michael to the locker room momentarily, but he's been back out there playing the entire second half. And I'd have let has the speed to make a big play if they get him the ball like they just did. Now under five and a half minutes. Second down. Skinner waiting, waiting, and now going deep. He's got a man out there at Idolette, and he's got it. Bob called it. Idolette's got it, and it's a first down Wake Forest. Forest all the way down to the 12-yard line. You're right on the money there, partner. Well, he is the guy that has the speed. Right now, he just makes a move to the outside and just goes deep. Skinner buys some time, 
and gets the ball out there to him. The biggest play of the day for Wake Forest, obviously, and now they've got a first and 10. The Georgia Tech 12. Straight ahead they go. Bryant bangs his way for four yards. Yeah, they're inside the Yellow Jacket 10-yard line. Idolette with the biggest play offensively for either team today, and not only doing it on offense, but doing it as a blocker. How about that hit? <laughs> and that's a linebacker and a pretty good one, too. Well, right now, Jim Grove in the offense just says, all right, don't mess it up. Don't turn it over. We'll kick a field goal and take our chances. D'Angelo Bryant's a tailback. He gets the call, trying to bounce it outside, and Georgia Tech holding on for dear life. And no gain on the play. Might have lost a half yard. Gary Guyton was holding on, number 58, the outside linebacker. And the clock ticking down. It'll be less than four minutes left the next time Wake Forest snaps it. And they've got a second down situation. Third down, I beg your pardon, and six. Well, Nessa, they could get a first down just inside, just at the two-yard line. So they have that opportunity. If they could get to the two, get that first down, they could run most of this clock out. Sam Swank on the season. He's lining up for what would be the go-ahead field goal, but the touchdown is still very much a possibility for this young guy. Skinner takes the snap. Bryant gets the handle, broke one tackle, broke two, and got to the five. So it is fourth down. Boy, and here's a, here's the deal right here. If I'm Wake Forest, what I do is because of, you know, you, the, the timeouts really don't matter for them now. But you run that thing down all the way as far as the clock will go and then take a timeout. So you guys are set. Swank two out of three today. 20 at 27 on the season. Lines up for a 22 yard kick to try to give Wake Forest the lead with three minutes left in the ball game. Swank, kick on the way and perfect. Wake Forest now leads. Georgia Tech's got one more opportunity. 2.55 to go and now they're down by three. I'm not sure if he was a secret because I know the folks in Winston-Salem know all about him and so do the people that vote on All-American teams and that type of thing but Sam Swank with his third field goal, has just given Wake Forest the lead, 2.55 to go. And I asked the question earlier, does the last team that have the ball win the football game? Georgia Tech's going to give us an answer here in just a minute. Skinner, by the way, Riley was four for four on that drive, including that 45-yarder to Idolette that got him in field goal range. Will Jim Grove tell us about recruiting uh, down here? When he was recruiting Skinner, he said that Corky Rogers over here at Bowles High School. Yep. He was recruiting a kid named Russell, a defensive lineman, and uh, Corky says, you got to come into my office. <laughs> i got to talk to you about this guy, Skinner. And he says, well, he says, I'll talk to you about it. And he sent his uh, quarterback coach down, looked at some film. He says, we've already got a quarterback in our class, but I want that kid also. And he took him as their last scholarship kid. And he says, when Corky Rogers talks, you listen. Here's the kick. Jamal Evans, he's going to bring this one out from about six yards deep. He got across the 20 to about the 21-yard line. So Skinner talking upstairs, Wake Forest in the lead, and now it's time for Reggie Ball for a fourth-quarter comeback, possibly. It's Reggie Ball's turn, and it's a final turn to see if he can be an ACC champion. Field goal to tie, a touchdown would probably win it. And they're still not double-covered Calvin. Ball on first down. Fires in and out of the hands of Greg Smith. That's a third straight pass he's attempted at number five, and the reason is James Johnson went out when he was injured on that big hit on an incomplete pass, and that's put the pressure on the redshirt freshman from Atlanta, Greg Smith, to be in the lineup. That's James Johnson under that poncho. So Calvin Johnson is the big play guy. James Johnson was always Mr. Dependability because of the double teams on Calvin, and now that option's not there for Georgia Tech. Second down and 10. Ball to throw. Going to go deep down the left sideline. Overshoots everybody. Calvin Johnson the closest. Actually, Alfonso Smith was the closest on the play. Brad, it's, I mean, it really is amazing. Alfonso Smith is playing that corner, and it's the last two times he's been on Calvin Johnson, playing him man-to-man. -man. Now, you, you saw the safety get over to Gaddis, 
but it's still Alfonso Smith. He's playing man to man. It, it's incredible. And they don't need big chunks. They need the, the, the short passes that they were playing before. Now it's third and long. Third down and ten. And you got to wonder. And you would assume Georgia Tech may never touch it again. This might be two down territory. They need ten, but they might need two downs to try to get it. Ball back to throw. Flush from the pocket and in trouble. And now really in trouble. And that's about the last thing you want to do is be sacked out of bounds. But there will be another play. He loss of three. Yeah, he could have thrown the ball and avoided the loss of three. Grace, the thing about it is that Wake Forest only sent two guys. They owned from the line of scrimmage, they had two guys rushing, and they had one guy on the outside. And that was all they had. And Georgia Tech's going to punt. Will they ever see the ball again? They've got two timeouts remaining, 2.13 left to play. Fourth and 13, they had a, would have to have gotten it all the way out to the 31-yard line yeah. for the first down. This is a good call. If you go for it fourth down and don't make it, the game's over. Brooks is going to take a Georgia Tech bounce. And it goes all the way down to the 28-yard line. A 55-yard punt. And Riley Skinner gathering his troops, and you can hear him saying, let's go. They know they're two minutes away from winning the ACC championship and going to the Orange Bowl. But they've got to get a couple first downs. Georgia Tech can stop it twice. And that's it. And that last drive, the key play of the ball game. Willie Idolette, the senior out of Chattanooga. Bob had said right before this play, he's their big play guy if they can get it to him. And Skinner did. Even with a double coverage, Idolette pulled it down, the biggest offensive play of the day. 73 yards on his three catches, none bigger than that one. And that gave him the field goal lead, 9-6. Georgia Tech just took one of its first, uh, one of its uh, remaining timeouts. So now they can't stop it twice. Two minutes and two seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Georgia Tech's got one timeout remaining. Wake Forest, they know that a first down would be gold right now. Yeah. I don't mean old gold like their uniforms. I mean real gold. And, and Georgia Tech needs to come up with a turnover. They're going for the ball. Here's D'Angelo Bryant. Bryant hit low, keeps going. Got about five yards before D.J. Jones finally can stop him. Georgia Tech watching that scoreboard clock. And now it's stopped with 154 as they take their final timeout. What a big change that timing rule was that uh, they instituted this year. Yep. Georgia Tech had to take a timeout after the punt because the clock starts on a change of possession. So Georgia Tech had to use one of theirs right away. Calvin Johnson wishing, wishing he could get one more chance, but they may not get it. Wake Forest gets a first down. Georgia Tech will never touch it again. Don't forget USC and UCLA. USC, if they can win that, they've got a date with the Buckeyes. Wake Forest right now thinking Orange Bowl and BCS as the ACC champions. If they can hold on to this three-point lead with 1.54 remaining, and Georgia Tech has no way to stop the clock again. John Tenuta's defense, as Bob said, there may be their only hope is forcing a turnover. And you know Wake Forest, a team that doesn't turn it over much, is thinking the exact opposite. They led, the, they led the conference in fewest turnovers, fewest takeaways, I mean, fewest giveaways and fewest interceptions. They just don't give the ball away that much. Second down at five, Skinner in the gun. Bringing Idolette in motion. Now stopping and resetting the offense. The play clock moving, the game clock not until the snap. Didn't get the first down, got about three more, and it's going to be third down and two. And now the clock will continue to run. There's nothing Georgia Tech can do about it. The biggest third and two of the season for either team, obviously, as the clock winds its way under a minute and a half. You know, it's really been amazing watching Skinner in the, in the backfield. You know, he, he's, he'll come up to the line of scrimmage, and then he, he pauses for a second. Then he looks over. 
There are two other guys over there giving him signals. And he'll wait, and then he'll give them back to all, he'll tell them, tell them play the rest of the team. And they take this play clock down. Now they let everything go down to one second on the play clock, and then they took their, their uh, second timeout. So Wake Forest takes a timeout. That stops it at 1.13 remaining. And they'll huddle their troops around the ACC Coach of the Year. They're 73 seconds away from the biggest win in school history. I'm going to go out on a limb here, Bob, and tell you that they won't probably won't pass. <laughs> you're on a limb, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you sure that's not a tree trunk that you're on? <laughs> oh, man. You know, we, we talked about this at the beginning about a defensive football game, and you look at, you know, Calvin Johnson. I didn't, I don't have the stats down here, but how many did he catch? Uh, he's got about eight for 117 or so right and now. And no touchdowns, Brad. And, nope. you know, I mean, he's been open most of the day. Uh, they just, this Wake Forest defense that Greece talked about at the beginning and all through the game is what they do is they depend on this defense, the offense, they don't make mistakes, and they just hammer you defensively. That was Steve Lobotsky, the offensive coordinator that you saw. They call him Coach Lobo. And there's the defensive star of the day, John Abadi. Third down and two. D'Angelo Bryant, all 245 of them is the tailback. They fake it to him. They give it an idle on the end of round. First down, ball game, Wake Forest right there. Joe Anawai will bring him down. It won't matter. And now the celebration can begin on the Wake Forest sideline. Notice how he stayed in bounds. The fans in Winston-Salem who have come here and the ones at home, and that's not the rain on Jim Grove. He just got dunked on by his team over there. Boy, you talk about a well-coached team. I'm, I'm not kidding you. These kids are really uh, Wake Forest, both teams. But Wake Forest, you talk about discipline. Even Bob just mentioned how that goes outside, and, you know, tendency with anyone is to go out of bounds, whatever it is. He got back inside, knew he was going to get hammered. The oranges are being thrown on the field and they're going to stop play as obviously the Wake Forest fans and Skinner is saying, I'm ready. I'm ready to go to South Florida as a BCS entrant on the ACC champion, but they've got to clear some of the oranges off the field first. And then all they've got to do is take a knee. And I don't mean to pray. This is the greatest moment in football for a team that's on its way to a championship is to be able to just take a snap, go down to one knee, they call it the favorite play in the book. If you can run this one, you're a happy quarterback and a happy coach. And Riley Skinner has skinned the jackets. Jim Grobe is the coach of the year, Riley Skinner is the rookie of the year, and the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest for the first time in over 35 years are the Atlantic Coast Conference champions, and they're going to the Orange Bowl as the representative from the ACC to the BCS. Our congratulations to the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest, to the ACC champs for 2006. In a defensive battle, they win it over Georgia Tech, the final here in Jacksonville. Nine to six, Wake Forest on an all-field goal game. Our Chevrolet players of the game, John Abadi, 15 tackles defensively for Wake Forest, and Calvin Johnson in his attempt to try to get Georgia Tech to the Orange Bowl had a good game, but came up short of the end zone. Eight catches for 117 yards. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. There's some happy guys down on the field, as well they should be. Championship feels good. There'll be ACC championship rings all around. The Dr. Pepper ACC championship goes to the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest, 9-6. to six. Don't forget, coming up next here on ABC, the Trojans of USC try to get a date with Ohio State if they can get by the Bruins of UCLA. That's going to wrap it up for my partner Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Bonnie Bernstein, Brad Nessler from Jacksonville, where the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest are the ACC football champs. You're watching ESPN on ABC.